What is up guys, Ben Allen back again with another video and today is another skills validation episode, right, for all you future 68 whiskeys or current 68 whiskeys getting ready to do this. This is a uh, criteria that you're going to have to test on, right, we've already put out a few other videos going over other skills, you can check them out uh, on my channel. But uh, we have our demonstrator back again, Sergeant Zuni guy, feel free to say what's up. All right. There you go. And uh, today we're going to be doing uh, the chest seal and uh, yeah, show you guys how it goes. But without further ado, let's get to it. Alright guys, so I have the criteria right here. I'm going to read line by line. And as I read line by line, he's going to be performing that steps just so you guys can get a general idea. Again, I always say, uh, this is to give you an overview, all right? If your instructors in 68 Whiskey School teach you differently, uh, do what they say because they know how they're gonna grade you and you know they know what they're talking about. This is just to give you kind of a, a visual view because these are the same sheets that you guys will be using to test on these skills. So we're gonna go ahead and start. This is occlusive dressing. So step one, take BSI. As you can see, he's already done so. Step two, expose and assess the injury. Exposing, he's exposing, he sees a chest wound right there. So he's going to place the back of his hand, right? So he's going to be getting his materials ready right here. And then upon a full expiration, that means when the patient uh, exhales, uh, you're going to cover the wound with a large occlusive dressing. And you're going to cover the first wound that you encounter, which is this. And little tip, the reason he has the back of his hand on there is because the glove is non-porous. And it's applying that seal on there in the meantime while he preps his equipment. So he exhales, <sighs> places it on there, right? And you want to make sure that... Uh, the seal extends at least two inches on each side, like so. You see how he's doing that? And so, now that he's done that, he's placed the commercial chest seal, which is this right here, right? He's extended uh, two inches across. So now he's going to log roll the casualty or have the conscious casualty stood up and examine the back for an exit wound, right? If present, he's going to cover the exit wound on expiration with a large occlusive dressing, but uh, the way they do it, we're going to use a different type of improvised chest seal. So you can use the wrapper for the original dressing, or you can use any non-porous material, really. So on exhalation, he's going to apply that. He's applied that, right? So now he's going to get his three inch tape and seal all four sides, right? We've already pre-cut our tape which we recommend you do as well just because it'll save you time in the process because messing with tape with gloves is a real shitty situation. You don't want to do it. It's horrible. So he's doing that, guys. So while he's doing that, uh, I would really highly suggest you guys subscribe to the channel right now for future videos going over any 68 Whiskey content, right? And also like this video if you feel like you're learning something and comment down below whether you guys are excited for 68 Whiskey School, if you're nervous, uh, what you're most excited for, uh, and just in general, what are you what are you looking forward to being a 68 Whiskey Combat Medic, all right? But back to this. So as you can see, he's almost done, right? See, look at the tape, right? It's, it's extending at least one to two inches outside. It's making sure it's really adhesive to the back, making sure it's good, and you can see the wound right there. So perfect, right? So now that he's done that, he's going to ensure the material extends two inches above, four sides, Right and now he's going to place the casualty in the sitting position or injured side down in the recovery position. Right, so he's in the recovery position, and now uh, he's going to verbalize continued assessment of casualty for signs of progressive respiratory distress. I'm going to continue to assess the casualty for progressive respiratory distress. See, and now that he's done that, that's going to conclude this video, and we're going to lead into the next one that is going to be going over needle chest decompression which is what you would do if the casualty shows signs of progressive respiratory distress and also has, you know, torso trauma. So stay tuned for that video, guys. Check it out when it drops. And again, like this video if you found it informative. Subscribe to the channel. Even if you're not signed into your YouTube account, I encourage you to take the two minutes to actually sign in and subscribe, guys, because uh, I feel like this is valuable information for all you future 68 whiskeys, even you infantrymen out there. I swear, if you go to your unit knowing this medical knowledge as a, as a Bravo, you're going to have a leg up, guys. I promise you that. And uh, take it from him, guys. He was at the 82nd Airborne as a medic, and, you know, he, he knows his shit, so that's why he's the one demonstrating. I'm, uh, I'm humble enough to know when I'm not the best one in the room, but that's why I'm learning from him. That's why you guys are learning from him, and uh, we really hope you enjoyed these videos, and we will see you all in the next one. Later.